Hi everyone, welcome. Um, we're very happy to do this this meetup with Noemi that she's going to join us in a in a few minutes. Um, so I first of all I would like to know if you can hear me well. Is my audio okay? Um, and I also would like to know where are you watching us from? If you're here in Milan, if you're somewhere else in Italy, we would like to know. Let's wait. Okay. Uh, while uh, you. <laughs> okay. Now I, I see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are very, very happy to be here today. And first of all, I would like to to um, introduce ourselves before before we introduce our guest today. So we are Ladies Daddy Wax Milan, and we are a friendly, welcoming, and collaborative community focused on women, focused on especially uh, promoting and encouraging uh, women that work in tech, UX, UI, um, and te technology and innovation. Now I can see your answers. Thank you, you guys. Hope everyone is safe, first of all. Hope everyone is safe and healthy. And so we, uh, we as Ladies at UX Milan, we are the first chapter here in, in Italy. There are other chapters that are, are about to come. And we are present in more than, now it's more than six, 70 cities around the world. And these are some of the cities that uh, we are in. We are um, uh, a community nonprofit um, and we do volunteer work for that. So Ilaria and I, we are not being paid for, for doing that. Mm -hmm. And we have um, four types of um, events that we usually do, including meetups like today, uh, workshops, uh, panels, and Girl Talk. Almost forgot one. And for the this chapter here in Milan, it's me, Mariana, I'm Mariana Ozaki, uh, and Ilaria. Hi, I'm Ilaria, everyone. <laughs> And we are responsible for, for this chapter here in Milan. Each chapter has their, their chapter leaders. And we are very happy to be, to be here with you guys. So any questions that you have, write us. And let's connect. These are some of the, these links that you can find us. Um, basically, if you type Ladies That UX Milan, you will find us. And especially our Slack channel, uh, Slack group, when we share the events and also uh, questions, doubts, and it's a very direct channel for us to be engaged with you guys and also be connected. And if you if you want to uh, to speak here, if you think there is another woman that might be uh uh interesting person to 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 speak here we will be very happy to to receive your your messages and getting getting to know you guys better if you have any suggestions or feedbacks uh by the way today we're using a, a new platform um that we are testing today that i think will be working better than the other one the previous one that we were using before and that's it. I think that's it for, for the chapter. Uh, before uh, introducing Noemi, that she's going to speak about neuromarketing, I would like to, to start uh, an introduction for accessibility that we would like to do this before we start the, 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 the presentation. So 
Uh, I'm Mariana. I'm Asian. I have um, medium length hair, uh, dark hair. Uh, it's black actually. I'm wearing a dress that looks like a blouse, doesn't look like a dress. It's a black dress uh, with a pattern of flowers. And I'm using some headphones with a fake background <laughs> that everyone believes that is my actual, like my real, uh, my real living room, but it's fake. I do. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm Ilaria. I'm an Italian girl. I have a medium length brown hair. I'm wearing glasses and I'm wearing a white shirt with, uh, with a vest. Actually, now I'm at my hometown in uh, Verona, um, and that's it. So my background is actually real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm in Milan right now. So introducing our our guest, Noemi. So Noemi, actually, she, she studied psychology, and I'm really interest, interested in knowing uh, how she changed her career path to UX design because I think we never talked about this before. No. Um, and she's also a, a lady that UX, like she came to, she come to our events um, when we were meeting um, in person. And that's it. Let's introduce you guys to Noemi. Hi, Noemi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Ciao. Yes. Ciao. So Noemi today she's going to talk about neuromarketing. That actually this is a topic that I I don't really know so much, and will be very interesting to 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 see our your presentation. And Noemi um, currently works as a digital uh, UX designer and data analyst at Emile. Yeah. So I will give you the space to start. Thank okay. you very much for joining us today. Thank you, girls. And let me first introduce myself for accessibility. So I'm Noemi, I'm an Italian girl, and I have long uh, blonde hair. I'm wearing a dress with a flower pattern. And actually, this is my my bedroom in Milan, so my background is real. Not very beautiful, but yeah, real. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think you can start your presentation yeah. now, and then we leave the space for you. I will start by sharing my screen. Give me a check. Do you see? Yes. Yes. Okay. Super. Oops. Uh, sorry. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so today we are talking about uh, neuromarketing and digital experience. How brands are facing uh, the crisis, and how the communication uh, can be uh, can be changed by the crisis. Ciao, first of all. And that's me. Uh, I'm Miami, as you already know. And this is my font, let's say. I was looking for this font before doing the presentation. And now I put on the on the slides. I'm a UX designer and I'm a data analyst. I really, really uh, put an effort to still have data analysts on my job profile because I really, really uh, like data. And I, I'm trying to approach data, not in a quantitative way, but to, in order to try to, to get some qualitative insight from the data. That's, I think, the most beautiful part of uh, the of data itself. So here I just put some poster that really represents myself, just to like try to be super fast. I really like all the gears and mechanism uh, beside stuff. 
And this pattern, I, in a way, um, I use this pattern for product, for person, <laughs> and so for the mind. So I really, really like to understand what is beside everything uh, concerning our behavior or how uh, things are changing and works. But let me start from the beginning because we were saying before that uh, it's very hard to, to change to change path, but I, I never uh, tell my story. So everything pretty much start here. So I was doing my, my bachelor thesis. I was studying in, uh, in the university in Florence and I was going to, to my professor to show my thesis. And when I arrived to, to the professor, he just stopped me. I was full of questions, full of doubt. So he was just stopped me and he said something like, you want to take part to a test? And I was like, yes. Let's do it. At the beginning, I was thinking it was a joke, but then uh, actually I, I went to this lab and he put me some electrodes on my, on my head. And the test pretty much was about selecting some shapes. And I was giving some feedback, some taste feedbacks about shapes. At the beginning, I was not really, um, connecting the dot, let's say. But uh, then I discovered that it was a study uh, drive by Prada in order to understand which could be the best shape for the new collection of eggs. And these tips really opened my mind and my eyes and I start focus on, uh, on neuromarketing. So at the beginning, I was approaching everything, like trying to study as much as I can to understand what really is neuromarketing and how could I put in my in my life, in my in my work. And this is still very hard, but let's say that um, neuromarketing is a uh, not a really new word, but it was in two thousand zero two because it's a word that uh, I let me uh, create. And actually, it's about uh, studying the, the behavior and the um, approach of a product of marketing solution with the tool and the, let's say, mindset of the neuroscience. So taking in our mind all the consideration that we have uh, about neuroscience, all the consideration that we know with lots of experience about how we work, how we um, we behave, and let's put with the marketing, let's put with the with the product, with the service. In this melange, let's say uh, neuromarketing has life and uh, discover all this power. And really, I think it's a great match. And a lot of writers are still uh, create lots of book about. So maybe later I can give you some tips also. There are also Italian writers that are super cool about. So actually, uh, this, this is a question uh, that I would like to, uh, to ask you guys. Uh, it, that could be cool if we was if we were in a in a room together. But uh, let's do digital. A um, few years ago, I think like ten years ago, if you open like a book of microeconomics, you could find something like that. Okay. So what what you can find? You see that people choices are make with the principle of maximizing utility. And all the choices are made with a well-defined preferences that are constant over time. But I would like to know uh, if any of you uh, still trust of in this sentence or maybe think something different. 
Well, actually now, after years of study and uh, current uh, research, we know that emotion and cultural and biological limits play a fundamental role in our decision. So this is the most important things to know. There is no consistency. Over time, within ourselves, our choices are not consistent and are not only derived by rational, the rational part, but especially by the emotional part. But yeah, let's start from the basics because now I'm throwing lots of information, but we are going deeply step by step. So to understand what is uh, neuromarketing and why I'm telling about emotion and uh, cultural limits, we need to start from the three brains. What does it mean? So we don't have three different brains, but we consider that there are three fundamental moments in our, uh, let's say, development as a human and the brain take part in this development. So at the beginning, uh, we had the development of the ancient brain. So it was the first um, part of our uh, brain, of our head that actually uh, was in our, in human. And it's very, um, it take part in every, um, instinctive reaction concerning survival, sex, and the possibility of keep doing our, our, our life, let's say. So this is the first part that was developing in a chronological uh, step in our human uh, uh, path. And it's super, super important because it activates when we are in front of food stimulation or sex stimulation or we are risk something so this is the first first part that activates and actually we can see with the tool of neuromarketing and not to your marketing but on neuroscience this area that activates in our mind in fact uh, i by watching this um, image you can it's pretty common to uh, find more attractive the girl with the lips on our left compared to the one in our life, in our right. And the ancient part of our brain actually take a crucial role when something like that happened. So we were in the middle of the crisis and everyone was telling us that uh, we need to go shopping, we need to get grocery as we can. And actually, the first part that activates is our ancient, ancient brain that say, okay, I have to go groceries as fast as I can. I have to, um, to queuing uh, for one hour to get some, uh, some biscuits or some food, some pasta. So this is what takes place and what really activates our body, our mind to just go without even like really processing what is happening. Then the middle brain. So it's a very middle moment in our evolution. And the middle brain take part and uh, put a fundamental in our, in our brain, no? The middle brain is uh, responsive for the emotion that we felt when we see a picture like that. We, we felt like a very contrasting emotion, no? There is a case is very uh, amusing at the moment, but is uh, is swimming in a sea of pollution of plastic. This part, so the emotion part, connecting to our insula and our amygdala, is super important and activates in this moment. And it's not even uh, above the level of consciousness. So we are still in between an unconscious and instinctive, instinctive uh, reaction to the world. And this part of our brain 
take a role where we see something like that. That this picture really uh, are so much. We we saw a lot of this in our in our um, past months, and something like sadness, uh, confusion, really uh, was in our mind. And these emotions are super. Um, super clear in our mind and activates in a specific area of our head. After this uh, first two brain, we just arrive to the recent uh, brain. So the new uh, cortex, let's say in a more uh, specific uh, word, uh, arrives at the end of our evolution as is super important for elaborating what we uh, uh, what we experiment before. So after the instinctive of sex, food, or fear, after the the emotional part, we need a rational elaboration of everything of information. We know that we we are very bombing about information, and this is the moment in which. Uh, in, in a very conscious way, we are processing all this information, all this data that we actually uh, got from the world. And this is a very nice advertisement that it was in a hostel of Amsterdam. They create a super funny poster because they were horrible in uh, cleanings, in uh, uh, noise, in everything. And they create this very, very funny advertisement that stimulates our recent brain. Because, uh, for example, this kind of communication, you, you, have, you have to think about, no? It's something super quick because there is an image and everything, but you have to think about and makes you uh, laugh. So it's super um, elaborating as a communication. And actually, the recent brain is uh, what activates when we are striving for information or to understand what is going on. And data were the, let's say, the king of our last month because we were striving for data. We were looking for data everywhere. And here I put some screen of the of some platform and interface that showing the increasing of case or death unfortunately and he in this moment then we that we want to gather information both our ancient and our middle and our recent brain cooperate in order to find something maybe we are driving by fear and we want to understand more but when we just arrive in this situation the rational part wants to understand and read the data and here I put um, an image of a communication that we were really get used uh, one month ago about the Borelli that every day at six arrives with a new information about Italy and the COVID situation. So most of our decision making is triggered and governed by our unconscious side our ancient brain, let's say. Um, there are some labs uh, in Germany that lots of years ago studied the brain while we were uh, responding to a stimulus and know that the area of Broadman is actually activated several milliseconds before that we were aware of it. So this means that uh, our brain is already active in a in unconscious in unconscious moment before we actually understand. And what we decide when we are conscious is super influenced, but about what we get when we were unconscious. So this seven millisecond. And only at this point that we got this unconscious stimulus we arrive at the neocortex and we can start to rationalize decision and execute. 
Of course, uh, for a website, I'm speaking about website because I'm working uh, in the digital field, so I'm very good used to speak about website and application. But uh, this study that we are seeing today, it's super concerning reality, so really practical things, our reality in the physical world. So when we want to create a product or a service or a website, all the three brains have to be uh, considered. So we can do a product without thinking about the ancient brain that is super stimulated with this kind of uh, very instant uh, reaction. But we know that when we are stimulated, then we want a rational proof. And what we create has to cover all these three brain, also the information that our mind needs to actually buy something. And this is something that people that create website or e-commerce has to take in the mind, very, very impressed. So my question during this time that I was at home working and I was going out and I was thinking, what is going on guys? Like, everything arrives from a point and we couldn't be back together to, to our normality. So I ask myself, what role do our emotion and cognitive processes play in time of crisis, like this time? And to speak about this stuff, we need to introduce a very uh, interesting um, part of our study, of the psychology study, that are bias. So bias, let's say biases, are actually some heuristics. They are super shortcuts that our mind have and take when is in a very ambiguous uh, situation. So when you don't have lots of elements that can uh, build your elaboration of the reality, we are going uh, to understand the reality with biases. It's a very shortcut, let's say, and we have a lot of shortcuts. Our mind is super uh, lazy in a way and use biases a lot. When I was th thinking about the bias, I was completely uh, thinking about what happened in the world now and what were other uh, crises that affect our world in the last um, decades or maybe 20 years. And I was thinking about the crisis of the American system and the financial crisis in 2008. But then I was keep thinking about other crisis moment, our pandemic uh, situation. I put like in uh, Excel everything, and I say no, nothing is is like this moment that we are facing. Even I was trying to find communication from the two thousand zero eight about the crisis of the economical system. I didn't find something very important. Also for the SARS, also for the flu. And what I came up my mind like one day is that this moment and this uh, pandemic uh, situation with the COVID as a quality, uh, I want to use the, the word quality, uh, that is the fact that is super intrusive. Just this word came in my mind. And the fact that it's intrusive, you can say that it's true because something like just arrives in your life and you didn't have any clue to understand how this is going on and how everything in a day um, become in the world that is a new world that you have to face. I remember that I was in the um, in the airport because on uh, February I was traveling a lot, and I think, well, yeah, COVID, okay, but it, it was not so intrusive, you know. 
at one point, and this is, I think, it's a property of intrusiveness itself, just arrive in your house and you have to understand. And one bias that uh, was super active in our minds, so uh, very super fast shortcut, is uh, the bias of implicit association. Here I put some screen that reflects what means implicit association. So what happened is that while the coronavirus arrives and everything got collapsed, uh, there was this weird case of um, the beer, Corona, that got a super quick um, drop in the selling because of this implicit association. Nothing to do about the product itself, nothing to do about anything else, but the only association in our mind with the same word creates something like that. I also put on the, on the bottom the screen of Google Trends that show the interest of this uh, correlation, let's say it's not even a correlation, um, for user in, uh, in the digital browsing. And another curious uh, fact was the, the streaming of Spotify that like uh, some song had a super peak of streaming because it was uh, really connected to the coronavirus, like the rhythm of the night. And then another important bias is social proof. What is super funny, I was speaking with an, an author uh, last week, is that we only, we always uh, study the social proof from a online point of view. So we are um, looking at this bias in the online world. And now we see the social proof in the reality. So how this bias actually works in uh, real life. What does social proof mean? Actually, it's super quick and intuitive. Is the fact that the behavior of others influence my behavior. And this is very linked to, to Darwin, let's say, because in our evolutional path, we understood in a super intuitive way that we need to look about the group and what the group is doing to preserve myself and my life and my species. So social proof in, uh, in this period was something like that. At the beginning, everyone was still outside. We were taking our beers. We were going out to ladies that you ex uh, Milan uh, in the bars. But then uh, something arrives uh, from the um, government. Uh, they start saying something. Also, our friends start to wear a mask and take some, you know, some rule seriously. So we start saying something like, oh, one meter, let's do two meters of distancing. So social distancing um, was starting to be familiar. And we were starting to post our picture at home. We were starting to using the hashtag. At what point we were stuck in our house? And we were back into to search for a community. We were back into search for the group uh, and to the warm of something more in my in my uh, in my day. So we were walking at people at the balconies. We were doing flash mob. Uh, we were singing all together. And this is super. Uh, the social proof is something that you would never do alone, but in the group. Uh, start to be our normality and everyone uh, get mask and everyone go to the balcony to sing some song. Let's say that not everyone, because for me it was kind of uh, trivial, but it's a choice. And this is actually how social proof works in the digital world. I want always to have these two aside the physical world that I was studying in this moment and the digital world that we are uh, looking at today. So social proof, for example, for um, this is a screenshot of TripAdvisor. 
So for recommendation system, it's something about giving re recommendation and looking for feedbacks. So it's super important because, you know, now no one uh, wants to go to a restaurant before uh, without checking the comments of TripAdvisor, or you will never go to an Airbnb without checking the review of other clients. This is social proof, it's super important. And then another social proof in a different uh, um, frame, the social proof of uh, social, social network like Instagram. So everyone that use the hashtag stay at home, stay at home safe, or I was using maybe uh, the one uh, uh, your star cousin grass or something like that. So people that starting cooking, uh, exercise, doing a lot of these things. Another super important bias is scarcity. Uh, we saw some picture before about empty supermarket. That supermarket and our behavior is drive by scarcity. When you think, when you feel that something, gods or other things, uh, is going to be uh, low. Actually, the the arousal, the arousal uh, increase, and you want to get that. Also, the competition to get that augment. And this you can see, um, for example, in the website, uh, booking is a masterclass of using a scarcity uh, bias because it's always putting some triggers like like last five rooms area and this is something that we see online but we all also saw on the on the real world in the last two months and then the framing effect this is super funny i really like this effect because uh, it's super real like when you uh, conceive uh, a thing then it's everything that we conceive in our life it's uh drive by the contest the biggest contest in which is putting so for example uh before the lockdown going to groceries was something that we really we don't really like i mean uh, we were going out we want to take advantage of our free time we don't want to stay hours for groceries but when we got locked down uh, and we need to stay home, going to the supermarket was like the best things that you can do in the entire day. I was always really enjoy to uh, to go to group, to trash my garbage. I really like that as well. But you see, like the framing effect is super important because if you change the contest, if you change the moment, also what you think about this action change. And also this meme is super funny because uh, maybe when we left uh, 2019, we were thinking that, well, 2020 could be a super cool year. And then after three months, we understand that uh, actually life in 2019 was super cool. And then confirmation bias. This is super uh, important while we are facing about data. So the confirmation bias says something like uh, like that. When you are in a in a approach, for example, at data, in a positive approach to data. So for example, you are thinking, oh, the um, cases are uh, decreased in a few weeks, maybe we can go outside. Then you're gonna interpret uh other information in a positive way so you are going to gather confirmation uh, in your proof you're going to gather information that confirm your pre-existing um let's say approach to the fact and this is super important because uh affect a lot of things also in social network and how we facing uh, with uh, fake news, for example. But this is another another field that I don't want to open now.
Another reflection that stimulated this moment in my mind was the fact that the virus uh, has managed to change our habits much more, in a much more uh, radical way than the climate change. So we were uh, back to 2019, we had this um, climatic um, emergency. We were going to the street, we were doing a lot of communication about, but it was not so impacting. It, it was not so important for for ourselves. Maybe we were doing something more, we were separate the plastic uh, and uh, paper, we were doing, uh, we were maybe drinking in a, in a bottle and not a plastic bottle, but still we were not changing our habits in a radical way, something like more deep. And the fact is that it's very linked to the word that I was telling you before about the virus of it's the fact that the virus was super intrusive and the risk perception was completely different. When you have something in your in your house at the door, knocking at the door, actually it takes the priority of, of everything. And this is a super nice quotation of Paul Graham, that is a British author, is a is a very guru, I think, that say that people aren't surprised when you tell that, that this post was about the 4th of March. So it's not super new, but it's super um, quick, I think. People aren't surprised when you tell them that there are 13,000 COVID cases outside China. But when you tell them that this number doubles every three days, then they got shocked and they asked for information. So this is the fact now. We are not very good about calculation and we do a lot of planning fallacy. So we are not thinking about the future in an exponential way but we are thinking about the future in a very linear way. And this is also another bias that we have. But when someone telling us that the future is not linear and the cases maybe uh, increase in an exponential way, then we got a ton. And all this consideration, what we can say about brands by taking the this consideration in our mind well i think that at the beginning brand were a little bit confused about what they could do and also uh they really try to understand if uh, the budget that they have could be used to create a new communication and what we know is that someone started doing something and they were right because they were between the fact of freezing everything or start doing something new. And actually, we know that communication is the unique tool to be relevant in a changed contest. So no matter how the contest is changing, brands still need to communicate, to say something to um, people that are loyal, but also new customer. And I here I put some example that I some references that I found out super interesting uh, while I was studying for for the speech, while I was looking at what is going on. And one of the the cases that I really like is the one of uh, IKEA Italia. So what they they actually do were really do this uh, twist about the claim uh, that they say something like at the, before the COVID and everything, the claim of IKEA is uh, born to change. And then they change the claim and the hashtag and everything to start from home. Lots of brands did it. 
but they really found out a nice uh, format. Also, they started a format in the stories, in the social uh, network in uh, Instagram, that they were using things in the house and they, they were telling you how to give a new life to maybe old stuff in the, in the house. Something that Ikea didn't do before, and it's it was super new for them. Una nuova libertà di scegliere se coltivare un orto in cucina o la passione che ormai hai fatto tua. O quasi. Benvenuto al sole dell'estate, da prendere comodi comodi in balcone o in bikini sul parquet. Benvenuto al tuo palco preferito e al tempo che dedichi a te, che ora sai condividere con tutta la famiglia. Benvenuti in nuove possibilità, perché è ora di riaprirsi alla vita e ripartire da casa, oggi più che mai. And I put this video because um, when I did the webinar some weeks ago, I used another video because they changed it in the meanwhile. And I think this is super clever because we also changed the phase. Um, in which we are. So we, at the beginning, we were in the middle phase before uh, start going outside. Now we are facing a new phase with like that we usually call it new normality. And they create new content to, to give some, uh, some tips, some emotion to customer uh, by looking at the contest, uh, the uh, answer to the contest. Another super brand that uh, is something on top, of course. I don't really judge Nike. I don't really want to give any um, moral consideration of Nike. But I really trust in, uh, in the fact that they are super strong in the communication, the brand communication that they, they do in every time of history. And I put this example because you know that Nike uh, provides training, uh, provides uh, stuff, a lot of things that you can actually do outside. So you play sport outside, maybe in the gym, but gym were closed. So they need to change the communication as well by facing this new model. And they say something super cool that is something like, now you can play for the world because by playing at your place by playing at home, you can actually get everyone in a safe uh, mood to play. And so this is, I think, very, very um, wonderful. <laughs> Also a nice reference that I was looking at uh, is Dove, that is, um, there are some years that they are uh, providing this uh, new way of conceiving beauty. And they, they did something in Canada like, like that. They say that Courage is beautiful and they were doing this uh, advertisement with all the the face of people that works in the hospital. And I think it was super, super nice to, to do something like that. And it was also um, important to, to give a moment of um, recognition to these people. 
and then I was I was looking to 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 the big. I was looking to Airbnb. That we know that the core business of our of Airbnb is to book room around the world. So is the travel is the the fact that you do experiences. So they know that uh, they couldn't have any booking. And they add a new section in the website that is experience online, so online experience, to provide something new. So they create new uh, content to answer to the moment. They will say, OK, we can't do physical experience. Let's try with the online experience. I also uh, put this screen about our Airbnb and talent directory because this is something that makes me reflect a lot. I always consider this giant of technology and platform uh, not vulnerable. And when I discovered that after the, the crisis, uh, the 25% of employee of Airbnb uh, didn't have a job, got fired. Um, I was really questioning myself and like the system, you know, itself. Huh? And I say, well, maybe all these giants are not so uh, invulnerable. But also in this case, in this case, they did something uh, interesting because they provide to the employee a uh, platform to, to get know to other brands, our company, the profile of these people, and giving them a spot to explain what they were doing in Airbnb in order to give them visibility and references for the future job. So. I think that this is super, maybe, uh, clever. But also, uh, it's important no? to uh, respond to the moment in different ways. So at the beginning, they were trying to experience online. But of course, they were not so, were still uh, in a business crisis. And so they create the talent directory to improve the, um, this way of communication. Uh, between the employee that got fired with the rest of the professional work. And then another uh, super funny communication. I I follow Durex Italia because I really uh, find that they are super funny uh, in a smart way, of course. And they say something like that. They also adapt a lot to um, the communication with this moment. And they always try to find a funny way to express a super uh, simple concept. In this case, uh, uh, it's a suggestion, both when you go out or when you go in, in their, in their mood. And this is a... Uh... <laughs> Social distancing Il mondo per country la cipolla Che aiuta gli altri a stare lontano Sono da Burger King This is also a super funny uh, Super funny advertisement A commercial uh, That I saw maybe a few days ago About social distancing So they are still using some concept and they are creating something uh, creative but still um, super engaging. This is a commercial made by Real Social, I think. And I found, I, I found that really, um, really precise. But why I put all these uh, references about brands and everything? Why I'm here telling you that brands still have to communicate and see something? in this moment. So we know about our me measurement and our tool and our studies that the brands to which we are most loyal and faithful activate the same area connected to the people that we love. 
this is uh, when I when I read for the first time this sentence, I got really uh, shocked about because actually the same areas that activates when you are thinking about uh, family member activate for these family familiarity things. When you think about brands or service or tools that are very familiar for you. And I think that this connection is super important because in a moment of crisis, when you think about your family, you think about someone that could answer you, that could give you some tips, some advice. So connecting the fact of familiar area to the fact that uh, to the band, when we are in a moment of uh, an uncertain moment, you are expecting that the brands are facing the moment by giving you something, giving you some advice or suggestion, but not be in silent or freezing about the moment. Of course, all these considerations are in this frame. So the message that a brand has to give us still have to be authentic, credible, in order to create value. Value means that is something that we really uh, trust on it and we really find uh, important in our, in our life to understand what is going on and maybe um, how this service could help our life more. And the value now is a new phase about understanding the reality. That is these two words that now are super hype. That is new normality. So now we have to understand, brands or corporate have to understand how to create and still create um, an important message, a message of values that is good with this new normality and could uh, reflect this new normality. I want to finish with this uh, advertisement that I was find out in the last, uh, maybe yesterday, it was yesterday, yeah? That is a kind of provocation to all the communication that we were seeing in this, in this last two months. And I think it's super precise. Questo è uno spot al contrario, in cui sono i consumatori che vogliono dire una cosa ai brand. Basta. Basta. Basta con questi spot melensi, con queste scene assurde. Non facciamo queste cose. Vi prego, basta con frasi come Oggi siamo orgogliosi di voi. Ma se non ci conosciamo neanche, mi partiamo insieme. Basta! Con più passione. Basta! Tradizione, innovazione, sostenibilità. Ma ci sentite? Dite tutti la stessa cosa. Parlate più di quello che siete davvero. Credetemi, la verità è rivoluzionaria. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope that also this last uh, provocation could stimulate some reflection in our mind. Here you can find also my links and my contact, so keep writing. Thank you very much for, for the talk, Noemi. It's very, I think this, this topic is very important for the, the moment that we are facing right now. Um, I think especially more than ever, uh, people, they need to, to feel connected with the brands. Uh, especially with the values that this branding, this brand is proposing to people. Um, there are a, a case that is not regarding design or anything like that, but it happened 
recently in Brazil. There was a like a good vibes influencer that she she talks about being healthy, about going to the gym, exercises that you can do, physical activity, uh, like fitness field. That she threw a, a party. Like actually, this girl she already had the coronavirus before, um, and actually the story was that she took this coronavirus in a in a in her system her sister's wedding and a lot of people this was the first moment where people in brazil started to to take to have the coronavirus and after she she healed like she she was cured and everything um she she threw a party with her friends and she posted on instagram and after that like she she lost um three million reais the the coin the currency there because of these brands, because this moment is very delicate. Depending on the message that you're going to to send to people, I think it's very important to be aligned to, to, to the values of the brand. And I think it's very interesting the, the case studies that you've shown because it's related to the family, it's related to a message and they are very important. So I am very happy that you you talk about this and guys if you have any questions please prepare your questions and ask noemi uh Elida, do you have any questions do you have anything uh, first of all thank you noemi because it was uh, really interesting uh, and the work you did uh, was just uh, in time and uh, and amazing really um actually i have a question uh, while you were talking about uh, booking online, uh, yeah. you were talk you were talking about uh, uh, dark patterns. Yeah. So, for example, the thing that you said that you, you stimulate uh, the the customer and create stress, uh, um, so he can he or she can make a decision made by impulse, so yes. not by reaction reaction and rational thinking. Uh, rational thinking um my i was wondering uh what do you think when this pandemic crisis and this particular moment uh, in history will be over uh if hopefully <laughs> hopefully soon yeah. uh, will be over um how this kind of dark pattern will change i mean uh do you see that they will probably increase or decrease uh, in our uh, in our behavior in our everyday life, uh, what is your your opinion about that? Yeah, the fact that I really uh, want to study that dark pattern because I really want to understand it. Like I don't want to be um, self biased about everything that is going on through the digital experience. You know, so when I arrive, uh, I always uh, put the booking. Uh, example but because it's one of the most um, relevant and easy for everyone when i got um, to the to the website so I, I got so stressed you know and you you actually perceive this uh impulse because you have the scarcity bias that say to you or oh, there are only five room left and then you have the urgency bias that say Oh, uh, you miss it for one day or you miss it for uh, three hours. And then you have also the anxiety of uh, other people that are looking at the same uh, offer with you and are maybe stealing your, <laughs> your seat in the, in the room. So it's like uh, it's super, super uh, deep and well studied the, the kind of dark pattern that they use. In this moment, I saw something that I don't really think that they are dark patterns, but they are nice, um, let's say, UX writing addition in uh, some delivery apps. For example, the fact that in the last month, I say that I see that um, when one maybe orders something on the restaurant, I can uh, select by flag. The fact that the driver can give me the, the the box 
without actually have a contact. So maybe I can flag the fact that he could leave the box uh, on the door of my building and I will go back and you know, all safety um, environment, take my box and go to my to my flat. So I, I think this kind of uh, changes, very smooth changes are maybe kind of a uh, dark pattern Someone maybe can say something like that. I think that if the changes are something like that, I personally appreciate because this makes me feel, as a user, for example, this makes me feel very, um, that a tool, a service is super good for me. So it was designed for me. So the fact of user-centric is, uh, is true. It's not only a uh, strategic word that we want to say everything, every time. But also, uh, I think that uh, as, as a person, I'm like feeling more safe. And you know that uh, if the context uh, change, also my perception or everything change. So maybe in this new cons um, concept environment, let's say, of the application with this super quick tip, I'm feeling more safe. And this makes me think about the delivery application in a better way. This is super quick in our mind. This is something that we can't control. I uh, estimate the app and the service better because they see that they change something for me and they makes me feel more safe. So I'm like, oh, this service is good. Maybe it's five star. So I think that maybe that pattern are going to, to change. I don't know if improve or uh, to increase or decrease, but I kind of know for sure that uh, they're gonna change in a way. So maybe the next dark pattern that we can say in booking is, uh, book with all the safety um, limits and all the safety. No, I want to say, um, like, like feel free to book because this uh, room is completely safe. It was well clean. It was uh, super in the um, in the government rule of the of the cleaning of the room, and it's super. Uh, I mean, you can go there, you don't risk anything. Maybe they are gonna start doing something like that, you know, changing the the message that they were um, giving to the user to a new communication. So new tips, new message that ensure a new part of our user. Okay, I, mean, I, I think, I think uh, absolutely, uh, yes. Uh, I think it's a, a sort of, it's a really revolutionary moment, uh, as you just said. Uh, maybe mm, the rise of no more dark patterns, but mm, the, as we said, mm, dark patterns for a reason, for a real reason and for a, a use uh, in order to help actually and finally uh, the user. Mm, I totally agree with you and actually I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited to to see what's next and to see how mm -hmm. everything like this could uh, could develop. Um, I don't know if uh, there's uh, other there are some other question because I have another one actually. So, <laughs> but I don't wanna I don't wanna be monopolized the the conversation. No, go on, go on. We we wait for the questions. Okay. Um, another thing that really shocked me uh was the thing that you said uh, brand uh, as like family member and that's quite shocked me and the first thing uh, that i just uh, can think about is uh, what happened then when this uh, um, necessity of feeling uh, more in touch and in relation with this kind of brand uh, will end uh, with this pandemic crisis that we hopefully end soon. I mean, how this relationship uh, could uh, could uh, evolve and develop itself. Yeah. What I was telling before is that uh, the fact that I, I really uh, say 
that we still need communication is super linked to, to the fact that after the, this moment, there are going to be uh, a new normality, a new reality that we need to face that uh, take uh, the experience of the crisis and analyze this experience. And what I think is that uh, if my favorite brand or my the, the service that I use the most, uh, it's quite the same. In this moment, uh, are not so talkative, are not so uh, well answered to my need of answer or understand the word. This could uh, impact what I'm gonna think about these brands and this service after this moment, because we as human beings, we took a lot of uh, effort and we took a lot of attention in uh, bad memories. So we, I know, we know that if I'm doing 10 things super good, super excellent, but I'm doing one thing wrong, this is gonna be my, like, you know, like a point in my mind and I always think about why I was wrong and I will always remember the, the bad experience. And this is the same things in brands. So you can do something, a super good communication for four years and then in this moment, you are not, uh, you are not able to manage and create something true, something valuable for the user and the user is going to remember. And this is the, the worst things ever because now we know that time is our new currency. So brands are uh, stealing our time. We are going from a platform to another one, open an app to another service. And if this time is effective in a negative way, we are going to remember and we are going to connect in the, the things. And maybe we are going to change brand and not be so loyal in future because this brand actually was not so good with us and the fact that uh, stimulates the same area of the family is something like uh, when a friend says something not so nice to you or do something not so nice uh, to you well you can forgive uh, but you're gonna remember so maybe next time you have you are more like okay i'm gonna think about I I got it, and <laughs> I agree as well. <laughs> Maybe Sorry, um, Maria has a question. Yes, I I have a question. Um, Noemi, what do you think that companies uh, will rethink about, like the way they approach users after the crisis? Like I mean, now uh, we need to rethink about also touch points and maybe not having touch points, maybe being just digital or apps. How do you think it's going to be um, after this moment goes by uh, in the sense of rethinking uh, no touch points or touchless experiences and how it's going to impact the marketing? I have to be honest because I'm reading a lot of paper now but I, I don't have a, a clear vision of uh, what is going to be the next level of uh, business or the next level of uh, digital transformation of the companies. What, I'm, uh, what I was thinking is that um, it's a very crucial moment because people are experiencing the fact that we can do things and keep living by only using the digital. Um, as I told you, last week I was uh, doing an interview with, uh, with Andrea Saletti, which is a super, uh, for me, super important author because he's speaking about uh, neuromarketing. And we were saying something like, oh, lots of new uh, cluster of user arrives in the digital world because because we are so get used to our generation facing e-commerce or whatever 
but we are not so good to use that uh, our uh, family, our um, um, parents, or maybe also grandparents are going to the digital world, the digital world uh, beside social network, let's see. So this is super interesting because also uh, open lots of discussion and, and also lots of things. What I think is that uh, e-commerce uh, provide a nice uh, and solid foundation uh, about the entire system and actually say to the world that uh, it's pretty, we are pretty mature to move to e-commerce in every, in every field. But also, I think that this is affect companies and corporates. And I'm still reading lots of paper about how they think that the world is going to change. Also, their relationship with the employee and the colleagues, like everything is going to change. I think that this is a super, super beautiful in, a, in, in, in an intellectual way <laughs> moment because open a lot of reflection that uh, in other contexts we, we, we couldn't have because also the relationship with our colleagues or the relationship inside the corporate is going to change. It is affected by this new way of communication in our working days. And I think that business has to take into consideration that there are going to be a huge transformation in the future. Maybe also that brand that... Uh, until now doesn't have a good space, now could find a proper way to express and provide a nice things to, to people, like in the small and in the big um, scale of things. Thank you. Thank you, Noemi. Um, if there, are there some other questions from our our guests online. If no, I'm going ahead with another one. <laughs> Go. If, if I if I can, okay. Um, okay. Uh, let's talk about the uh, kind of hot topic, at least in the uh, Italian digital field. Now, in this in this uh, specific moment, the um, uh, application Immuni. Okay. Uh, since a uh, um, few days ago, Immuni, um, Immuni <laughs> Ben Spoons, uh, of course, uh, uh, just released part of the, the code online because there was a, a huge uh, issue about this, uh, this topic, no? And, and also some other topics uh, at the beginning, when first uh, we heard about uh, there's this, um, this agency that uh, will you know, develop this application, uh, pros, cons, uh, and, and a lot of... Yeah. Can yeah. you give some context for people that, that maybe they, they have no idea about what you're talking about? Uh, yes, yeah, so sorry. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> no, sorry. no problem. Uh, no problem just. In Italy, um, the thing is that in Italy, um, this, uh, the government uh, asks, asks to this company to develop this, this uh, mobile app. Uh, it's called Immuni, which is an application that can uh, actually track in a kind of way um, and trace uh, the people who has the who has or had the the covid uh, with the many privacy issues that we are not talking now <laughs> right now in this uh, in this table um, and actually this this topic was very very critical because there were a lot of issues is uh, exactly about the, the privacy about the, the methodology about the um, how they develop it so the open source code or not so it was a very hot topic now actually uh, this uh, application uh, has been not delivered yet but uh, the part of the code has been released uh, and open to open it to the public uh, so my my question is uh, in your opinion noemi um, is there a bias uh, in the, the public opinion, uh, okay. yes, probably, probably yes. But yeah. What kind of bias? <laughs> what kind of bias um, could could be in the public opinion about uh, this uh, new mobile app uh, and uh, 
everything that can that came before such a nice question <laughs> sorry no, maybe it's complicated <laughs> no 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 it's it's an overall uh, reflection i think it's not only linked to immuni maybe we can expand this reflection to all the biases and all our the, our fears that increase when we are uh, in front of privacy stuff legal stuff and we think that we are selling our soul to the god uh, of technology or the devil of technology actually uh, all the people or the that are maybe complaining or uh, having a lot of bias uh, with the money uh, didn't doesn't think about that we are giving our data every day <laughs> in every moment so when we are uh, browsing the internet or we are logging to the, our Google account. So first of all, I think that people really um, sometimes approach uh, uh, to the things that are the most hype in that moment and. Uh, it, I don't know what's in English, but in, uh, in Italian, it's uh, uh, capo espiatorio, when we are looking for someone that has the, the, the duty, we are looking for like a specific uh, uh, protagonist, and now maybe Moonies is one of, of these. But also, uh, well, I think that um, people uh, are kind of, weak in this uh, in this part because now they they're losing the freedom of, of doing everything and now they're losing the freedom of, of uh, lots of freedom so i think that also the public opinion uh, reflect these uh, weaknesses that people feel and also feel the urgency about protecting the, data or privacy stuff that could be an issue actually yeah i i am pretty sure about but it's very very biased as you as you know it's very very dry uh, all our thought about communication i'm i'm thinking about also uh, like people that going outside actually lots of people are going outside and i know that this is not gonna be that this is not gonna last uh, much because maybe we're gonna back to some restriction. But also, I read a lot of communication, super, super boring communication that uh, are speaking about uh, this uh, life in Milan that is super uh, superficial. And just think about uh, beers and uh, putting this image all together. You know, we are super affected about how someone else um, send us messages. And I think that maybe <clears throat> also with the movie, they really drive the communication in a, in a way or in the opposite way. And for the data that makes us super feel uncomfortable, or maybe let's just uh, say that uh, we start thinking about things that we didn't think before. Sorry for the, the, the game of word, but it's true. Like, come on, guys, we are located in uh, all the e commerce and uh, Google stuff. And so it, it's just a new uh, step. Maybe if we were in, uh, in China, that they really had a, a super impactful uh, system, maybe we can, we, we as Occidental people, we are we we strive a lot. We have this problem of control with someone that controls us. Maybe the um, the method that uh, they use in the um, Asian part of the world, let's say, are more uh, effective and followed because it's a super different cultural background and way to approach stuff. We as Italian, we approach stuff in a in a specific way, and I think also linked to the fact that we are in a Europe. It's a 
transnational culture. And we always think about that someone that control is selling something to us. So fear and uh, the fear of losing control or giving something to someone that could use my data to do something very bad, I think that really affect uh, the, the, the public opinion. And I, I actually didn't um, looking for the first release of Immuni, but I, I knew that they were working a lot of, of the, on the app. Actually, I also thought, well, such a huge pressure of the on the team because everyone was speaking about the product and we as UX designer or service and product designers, we know like the pressure of really something. So I was poor guys, like I was thinking about the guys that developed, not, not even of the public uh, opinion. <laughs> Yes, I can imagine too. But the the thing that you said is uh, it's so true. So when uh, something doesn't bother us, uh, um, as long as it doesn't touch us in the in deep, so it's okay while we are um, uh, make our create our account on our social media, and it's okay to buy our the newest purse that we just we were just dying for, but. Then uh, when someone has uh, this kind of uh, thing, has this kind of uh, data for another reason, which is some, just as you said, uh, just more a little bit more than what we already we already did. Uh, it's something like no, wait, it's my privacy, it's my life. Uh, it's a, it's an issue actually. Thanks, uh, mm -hmm. thanks, Naomi. I what I, I can say is. That but this uh, this meetup uh, was what we can call uh, a quality conversation, a real quality conversation, and I really appreciate it a lot, uh, really. And uh, I'm sure that everybody everybody did. Thank you yes, so much. That, thank you. Thank for you very the, much. Sorry for the for my English because I was speaking in English in. Uh, moment of my life and now i'm working in italian i'm, I'm not practicing a lot and i'm ah, forgive for the english no <laughs> don't worry your english no is worries. perfect everyone understood the message Mine too. yeah I, you, I, no problem. I think that just like re recapping the 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 theme uh the topic uh what worries me uh more than the data regarding imoni will be yeah. more creating more prejudice or maybe racism uh, more than what it is because like yeah I can I yeah. can say because like I I have Asian traits even though I'm not I'm not Asian Asian I'm Brazilian but in the beginning of the coronavirus it was an issue for Asian people to go in Milan because they were blaming like you you brought this thing to to us you brought this this disease to to italy and i was following some asian girls here in in italy as well and they were talking about this um so like receiving a message saying that someone is 100 meters away from you and maybe you look that this person is asian or any form any um ethical trade i don't know what is gonna be like about the data? I cannot say that we are all used to. We are used to somehow, like even if we yeah. don't know, everywhere they have our data and everything. So yeah. I think it will be more like people judging each other and separating even more, bringing more um, social uh, isolation and That's separation. I was thinking the same just to, to close everything in our conversation. Um, I was actually thinking the same, like we were uh, speaking about this new uh, positive attitude about people that start doing yoga, maybe using the Landing Spoon uh, app as well, <laughs> or maybe they start being so spiritual, they start reading, they start doing this collective behavior at the balcony. But then if you go deep, you, you can actually see like, anger of people the hate of people that uh, it's uh, everyone is really ready to say something uh, that spread 
uh, hate, that spread anger. So I'm like, guys, come on. There is no consistency. We said at the beginning, it's so true. Like why we are doing something like that, that we are waiting for someone that going out for a beer to point uh, our fingers and say, oh, you are, you are the worst person ever. Actually, um, I received um, a message today from one of my best friends in my hometown. Uh, I hope that she's not gonna uh, see the talk. <laughs> uh, and she, because uh, I'm planning to go back to my hometown because it's been like four months and I was locking on my house and I just want to go back. And she says something, oh yeah, let's meet, but remember your mask, you remember everything because I don't want that people, you know, just can say something weird. I was like, I was like, what? <laughs> Only because I'm coming from Milan, guys, are you still thinking about this? I was really, maybe uh, I'm in the wrong side of the world, I don't know. <laughs> I was really like pissed off because I said, come on, we are always go, go out with masks. I was uh, doing smart working every day, going out for groceries because I was super, uh, I really want to, uh, be correct for everyone, even for myself. Now people are still thinking that this is something uh, that is a is a deal of Milan or is a problem of a uh, part of the of Italy. I I really can't believe really still, but this is what people think, and uh, we we need to know that uh, is in this way. Yeah. Yeah. Hope it ends soon. Yeah. 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 Thanks a lot, Noemi. Really. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Noemi. Uh, if you guys don't have any questions, you guys from YouTube. Yeah, now it's getting dark. <laughs> um, I think we can we can close for now. Um, don't forget one thing. I always forget because like I'm not a YouTuber. <laughs> so <laughs> don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe to our channels to our channel we have uh, other other events coming follow us on instagram which is our main channel that we we like update the most there so our communication will be direct if you if you text us me or Ilaria, we are going to answer right away and also follow Ladies That UX on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, also Twitter, more or less, because people don't use Twitter so much in Italy, I guess. Um, so I would like to, to thank Noemi very much, because I think, as, as Ilaria said, this, this content is really high quality content, and this is, like we're very happy to to host you and have your point of view in a topic that we we didn't know in depth so we're very happy i hope we can meet in other occasions not only for the events but to talk to do an aperitivo together maybe um, i'm a US, uh, lady that follows ladies <laughs> For so sure. looking forward to start another a real a real physical event and yes sure. yes we we had so many events and so many locations like cool locations to do our events this semester like Ilaria and I we were super excited but then yeah. like we're going to wait so I I thank you once again um, I'm really get glad that we we could talk today. And see you guys in the next event. Um, stay tuned because we have other things coming. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. You. Have a nice evening. Bye have bye a nice evening. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao.